Look, I know I did a Games Into Movies episode last time as well, but we're still a couple of weeks out from PAX East and GDC, and we've actually gone a couple of days without some game company showing its ass in public by some miracle, so there really isn't anything new to chew on news-wise. I mean, unless you want me to talk about stuff we only have vaguely pending details to come announcements about, like Labo VR or Google's supposed streaming console or whatnot, and I don't really have anything to say about either of those other than, of these two, questionably timed, ostentatious-sounding reboots of dubious ideas that people didn't want the first time, I bet one of them will be kind of fun and not just an expensive planned obsolescence data harvesting lure for early adopters like Glass was. I mean, besides, we're finally at the point where this is going to stop being a tiresome hypothetical discussion because Games to Movie Wave finally seems to be building to something ever since the first trailer started dropping for Detective Pikachu and the entertainment industry watchers realized, oh, right, that thing is going to make a billion goddamn dollars even if it's not any good, and it looks pretty damn good. Plus, you've got the Minions people doing the new Mario movie, which I'm really trying to keep an open mind about. and we're apparently staring down the barrel of the Sonic trailer releasing any day now, which I'm sure everyone is <clears throat> excited about. So yeah, we're probably going to end up with a bunch of game movies now, but like, now based on stuff that's actually endured and has some broader, time-proven pop culture cachet, as opposed to, hey, that Assassin's Creed thing sure is popular right at this minute, that might be worth wasting a year of Michael Fassbender's time on. Now I'm not 100% sure that Rampage necessarily qualifies as the same level of household name video game even to my generation as some other but I do think that the movie version provides a decent template for how that kind of thing can work, even in weird circumstances, and not only because I regard it as the only actual great video game movie, as in I thought it was a legitimately awesome giant monster movie, not just bad in a fun way like the Resident Evil movies, or decent compared to other versions of the same concept like the Mortal Kombat movie. I think it makes legitimately smart decisions about how you turn this kind of thing into a film. You see, the question you gotta ask yourself with anything like this is, what do people remember about a game, and what will they get a charge out of seeing on screen, and as source material, Rampage the Game had kind of the same problem that a lot of bigger modern games have, in that it was already trying to look and feel like the playable, sillier version of things that were already kind of bad movies. So they had to do it a little different, but also keep a lot of the game stuff. So they zeroed in on the giant monsters climbing and knocking down skyscrapers, because that is the game, and that there were three specific monsters with names, went with big animals instead of humanoid type ones to keep it different. You know, having the most charismatic movie star on the planet doing a kind of meta in the movie player character thing as the guy helping the good monster fight the bad ones didn't hurt either, I imagine. Increased strength, George! speed, agility. No! George, you okay? Ready to do this, buddy? And then they plugged other decently done monster movie stuff in around it, and they even worked in that thing from the game where you eat the girl in the red dress for the most points. Now let's get that out of the door. Come on. Davis, wait. I have one. Okay, new plan. We give it to George, and maybe he can help us out the other two. Okay. Get away from me! Get away from me! What the hell are you doing? What? Feeding the monster to the gorilla. Awesome. See, I don't buy that the thing you lose taking a game out of the context of being a game is the interactivity. It's the feeling that your response to that interactivity engendered, separate from the feelings that were responding to the narrative, characters, whatever else. So the successful game adaptation is likely the one that finds a way to approximate that sensation. Like I've seen those Detective Pikachu trailers play to audiences in theaters, and every time you can't even hear the sound over all the kids in the place just pointing and shouting out the names when they see their favorite Pokemon. So the movie plays the same way, thus recreating a version of of the oh boy, I saw and or caught up whatever fans used to get out of the game, then it's probably going to connect with people and be a hit. And if the Mario movie gives any of the 30 plus years worth of people who've got great memories of playing those games some semblance of connection to those, that might work too. Or if maybe the next person to take a pass at Street Fighter remembers that people play Street Fighter in the format of a fighting contest, and that the games are about a fighting contest, and that fighting contests are a really good thing to make movies out of, because like, 
There's a lot of really great popular movies that people like about fighting contests. It's one of the most proven subgenres. I, I mean, I mean, look at that's still going. There's a lot of good movies in there. A couple of them won Oscars for Stallone. But then every time they make a Street Fighter movie, it's all about like war or something. It's cool. Anyway, that's what every other game movie adaptation can learn from Rampage. You know, other than just to put the rock in things. Detective Pikachu comes out soon. My review will post on Escape to the Movies, but for now, it's good. Is it the best video game movie ever? I mean, it's the best video game movie ever that doesn't have The Rock in it. George, you okay? Ready to do this, buddy? So, I guess, spoiler, The Rock isn't in this. But yeah, it's a ton of fun, both a good movie and a good Pokemon movie. And to a lot of people, that sounded like a strange idea, building the first live-action attempt at such a huge franchise like Pokemon around a minor spin-off title like Detective Pikachu. But it ends up making a shocking amount of sense. The problem with doing a Pokemon movie was always going to be that the player character is generally a blank slate. The Pokemon themselves are obviously the stars, but they can't really deliver dialogue. The world of the games themselves run on really strange not quite reality logic that requires a lot of explanation if you're going to do something like a sports movie but about Pokemon battles. And I mean, the anime made it mostly work, and I guess you could adapt that, but is Ash really that much of an improvement over a blank slate? Is he though? Is he really? I mean, I guess like if you got like two really funny people, you could do a good comedy duo for a Team Rocket movie since their Pokemon talk, so it's like a you know, a crime duo movie, but for Pokemon, that that sounds kind of fun. Really fun, actually, but maybe it's more of a sequel thing than a first movie. But Detective Pikachu, turns out, makes a lot of sense. Audiences are generally familiar with detective movie tropes as a genre, so that can be the main thrust of the plot, with Pokemon battles and evolutions and gyms and other world-building details as part of the story to get introduced, but not as the focus. The gimmick of the talking Pikachu that the only the lead kid understands lets the most popular figure in the series. You know, the mascot takes center stage in the form of a slightly alternate take that lays things out for new fans, it fits together, it works, it even sets things in place nicely to do a more traditional Pokemon story if they end up wanting to do more of these, which, yeah, they're probably going to end up doing more of these. And it leads me to think, you know, we've talked about game movies on here a couple times before, and last week we looked at the awful-looking Sonic trailer. Uh... Meow? You know, maybe there's something to this whole looking at pieces of the game instead of the whole game or the whole franchise for what to do with these adaptations. Like, Illumination, the Minions people, are doing the animated Mario movie, which feels like a mistake, but keep an open mind, I guess. But you know, while trying to find a cinematic narrative within the purposefully slim and malleable Mario setup as defeated filmmakers before, maybe it would have been or would be a more sensible idea for them to do what Detective Pikachu did. Maybe start out with a movie about, say, just Yoshi, and maybe the Toads, and assorted other little monster guys. Funny animals being funny is something animation is pretty reliably good at, and it would be a way to build a strong foundation for that universe, and you could add more characters later with more focus. Maybe that would be the key. I mean, think about this. We just finished this big elaborate thing with the Avengers cycle and the whole bigger Marvel Cinematic Universe business. It's worth remembering that they started that whole thing out with a movie about Iron Man, a character very few non-comic book fans had any real attachment to at the time, whose robot suit gimmick and grab bag of C-list enemies weren't exactly screaming for a feature film. He wasn't a Wolverine or a Spider-Man. Sure, he was an Avenger, but he wasn't like the Hulk or Captain America or even Thor for decades. His central contribution to that team in the comics was being their landlord. So he might not have seemed like an obvious place for Marvel to start, but his simple kidnapped billionaire genius forced to make a weapon suit origin story updated topically for a war on terror setting and recast with Robert Downey Jr.'s comeback charisma made him an unexpectedly ideal vessel for post 9-11 catharsis for U.S. audiences that also held a global appeal from that seemingly offside beginning, they grew an entire universe. Now, of course, we all do remember that someone did in fact try this once before with a video game movie in Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li. Right? Well, I assure you that was a real movie that absolutely did happen, and it was supposed to be the first of multiple solo Street Fighter origin movies. And it was awful, though Chris Klein's scenes were memorable, I 
guess. Gangland homicide? Call me Nash. You just inherited a big problem. If chasing around an organization called Shadow Out. His name's Bison. I've tracked him through 11 major cities on four continents and never come close, not once. This guy walks through the raindrops. Bob! Everybody out! Hey, you better get out of here. You don't want to take it to this dance, detective. But that doesn't invalidate the concept, just the execution. Especially when the gaming world continues to be full of unique and interesting supporting secondary or tertiary characters like Alex Vance, Poison, King Hippo, and dozens of others who could be the unexpected entry point to an adaptation of their respective franchise. You know, or failing that, you could always just take the main character and give them a different hat. 